he has just received Annecy's Animation Film Festival's golden ticket, the accreditation for life. He's as much the endgame boss as the imaginative child that we all are with animation films. And we are very lucky to have him today with us, with a friend, um, a colleague of him, the director of his next project, Migration. So, you understood, we have with us Chris Meledandry and Benjamin Renner. Thank you very much for being with us, guys. Thank you for having us. Actually, ANSI is uh, always full of surprises because uh, you had a big surprise uh, right before this moment. You were receiving the golden ticket from Marcel and Michael from the festival, but also from a big surprise. Can you tell us more about this little moment? Yes, well, I had been told that the festival wanted to uh, uh, present me a golden ticket. Um, but, uh, uh, but I had no idea who was going to come to present it to me. Uh, we've just come from uh, that moment where Pharrell Williams came and surprised all of us uh, and, uh, and, and made a very, very touching uh, comments um, uh, and, uh, and helped to present this to me. So it was, a, it was quite an amazing moment for me personally. What's amazing for us, the, the audience, the, um, and ANSI's festival, is to always with you, Chris, discover a new parts of you. And with uh, the surprise of Pharrell Williams, we discovered also that you're not uh, a big producer uh, able to uh, gather those kind of talents. He also told us that you are his brother, his friends, and uh, last year we had the same kind of discovery with uh, Kyle Balda, and we are about to discover the same thing with Benjamin. Actually, you are um, a godfather uh, or somehow a father for the animation world, and it's uh, it's amazing to to have such a, a character in in this world that um, shape things and bring people together. And maybe, Benjamin, you can uh, explain us how you were like a bit surprised when Chris uh, tried to reach you for a migration project and how you also discover someone else than you at first imagined. Yeah, yeah, because it's true that, you know, like Hollywood, I, I know I came from French animation, independent French budget and and Hollywood is this big thing and, and, and you know, like sort of dream that you see when you're a kid. And, and so meeting Chris, you have a feeling that you have to put an act, you know, like to pretend, which I'm not good at at all, like just pretending that I'm this director, like confident and everything. So I thought, well, he's going to see me. He's going to just say, okay, well, that's not the guy for, for you know, like the kind of movie that I do. And, and I, I actually met you and I had this sort of opposite feeling, like you, we straight like started talking about feelings and emotions and, and experiences that we had. And, and immediately I felt completely confident in that. And also like uh, I knew that I could have a lot of fun working with you, Chris, like there, there was a lot of trust. And, and I spoke also with all the other directors and I felt like they shared the same impression. So, so immediately with Chris, you, I felt very confident and that's, I think, something that you managed to share and, and helping us, you know, like to, to fulfill those ideas and to transform them, to transform them, them into uh, films. Did uh, Pierre Coffin experience the, the same uh, discovery with you? How did you reach him? And well, you know, um, I had a turning point in my career uh, when, um, when I was uh, in my 40s. Um, and there was a moment where uh, I saw the work of Chris Wedge at Blue Sky Studios. It was very, very short pieces of animation that um, they were making for a film called Joe's Apartment. And uh, it was sequences in CG of uh, cockroaches dancing. And, um, and the work touched me in a way that immediately 
I knew I wanted to make a movie with him and Blue Sky Studios, which was about 40, 50 people at the time. I never had had that experience of seeing something that was so short and being so convinced that we could actually make a movie together. Same thing happened to me when I saw Pierre Coffin's work. Uh, I came to Paris almost 15, 16 years ago to this day. I was looking for a studio uh, to partner with to make uh, what was then Despicable Me. I met Jacques Bled. Uh, Jacques shared work from the studio. Among that work were these short uh, pieces that Pierre had directed. Um, uh, four or five short pieces of film. I, I knew in that moment that he was somebody that, um, that uh, I wanted to make a movie with. The ability that somehow came alive in me to recognize talent that uh, I want to work with um, was absolutely transformational. Um, with Benjamin, I had the opportunity to see more of his work because he had, you know, he had directed Ernest and Celestine. Um, but in each case, um, uh, when and and many others, but where I would reach out to a filmmaker uh, with Pierre, with Benjamin, there was a, 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 an initial period of. They're not quite knowing what to make of this. Like, um, you know, with Pierre, he had only directed short pieces of animation. Here I was saying, I want you to direct this movie. Um, I had an idea in mind, which was a partnership between him and somebody he'd never met before, Chris Renault, who I had had the pleasure of working with at Blue Sky uh, and doing a short film with him where he directed it. So um, you mentioned a word earlier. You said the word discovery. Mm. And I think if there's one word for me that expresses what I love about this process of making movies, it's the process of discovery. You know, I love watching Benjamin work because he finds ways to express moments in a film that are unique to his vision. And, um, and since I am very biased and, and find him to be very clever, very funny, very touching, you know, I, I, it's a thrill for me because I always, can, can know that I'm going to be surprised by how he's going to approach a moment. Um, and uh, uh, and that, it's, it's a, that's a great privilege for me. On stage, um, a few moments ago, you speaking about uh, Benjamin's work. You used three words as maybe uh, Benjamin Renner's recipe. It's comedy, images, and humanity. And finally, that's what we were talking in the beginning, that there is some, a, a lot of humanity radiating from your work, your productions. Can you, uh, Benjamin, tell us, and also Chris, how this migration production, which is not done yet, is specific and, and unique for such artistry, such uh, humanity too, although we're talking about ducks. Well, I, I think it's a hard thing for me to answer because there, there's this tone thing where uh, I sort of did what I said when I met you is like, I, I do what I know how to do. And that's unfortunately the only thing that I know how to do. So so I, I try to give this humor, but it's this comedy that I love. And, and, and of course, everyone like joining around with my quiet script and, you know, everyone, we added the, the, this comedy bits and everything. But I think there's, again, like what I said earlier is this thing that this movie is really relatable, like a really relatable about the family. And I, I wanted to make sure that anyone watching it could sort of like feel like there's a connection. 
and and there's this idea of like you know like opening yourself to the world and 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 visiting places and everything discovering new places and and getting out of your comfort zone so you're being rewarded with you know like wonderful moments people that you meet and you know like things that uh, are great for you which i felt were sort of like the milestone of a movie of like it's something also that we discovered along the way like we were like trying to understand exactly what it was and and as we progressed we sort of like understood all those emotions that we wanted to share so i, I think it's this relatable feeling that uh, that is really the, the base of the of a movie yeah actually you guys are the the new the, the new modern myth like ancient Greek stories that were guiding us through life, yeah. you are painting with ducks, something in which everyone can see his brother or the reaction of his fathers. And um, this is pretty amazing. Farrell told this to you, that you, you, you created a world in which you invited us all. And finally, this is what you guys are doing, is uh, giving us hints or keys to understand our world through yours? I think it's, I think it's about, for me, it's about sharing experiences and things that we observed and trying to share that again. And, and that's exactly what you're saying, like trying to be able to share those emotions and so people could sort of live that as well. You know, when you, um, there, there's a, for me, Benjamin discusses um, uh, an underlying uh, theme for the movie Um, which is, uh, has to do with fear. And when you uh, tackle uh, a, a topic like that, um, uh, you, 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 know, you never want the movie to feel um, overly serious or like it's telling people uh, how, to, how to behave. Or, um, but um, there was for me at the core of, this story from the beginning was, was this idea that there's a natural inclination to remain safe. It's, uh, that exists in, throughout all humanity. Um, our brain is wired to keep us safe, uh, in, you know, unless we're perhaps trying to eat what we need to. So when you go to what does it mean to survive, one of the key tenets of surviving is remaining safe. Um, and there is danger out in the world. We all know that. Um, so this idea of this dad wanting to keep his family safe felt uh, very relatable to us, very understandable. Um, but equally so was his partner's desire to, uh, to, to to not miss out on the experiences of life. It's a very simple idea, um, but there's great universality to that idea. Um, and really the only way for me to envision having um, told that idea in the story would be through uh, the specificity of a, of, of a sensibility like Benjamin's. Because any of these themes that we talk about, which are very, they're very classic themes, they've been explored since the beginning of story. Um, uh, uh, we, we, we're drawn to the ones that we feel are more relevant to us. But uh, the magic is exploring these themes through the specific vision of a storyteller like Benjamin. So, uh, so that you experience characters and everything is ultimately about the relationship that the audience forges with those characters. And through that, um, uh, this underlying story emerges. During the projection, I, I was not spying, I promise, but I couldn't help notice that you were on the edge of your seat almost and like uh, drawn to the screen like with the... Uh, you were almost the most uh, attentive and uh, 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 concentrated child of the, of the audience. 
And that's why I'm leading you to this. There is, and Benjamin, maybe you will confirm, but there is um, a, a very vibrating inner child in you, Chris, that um, makes you see the world as you see it, with Benjamin, with Pierre, with Farel. And um, I think this is really beautiful to have such a, um, a great man, a great producer for the world to shape and to give new colors and new stories, but always with the original storytelling story that you stick to, and also to be able to uh, smile, laugh, cry, and, and have emotions like we all do. Because sometimes people tend to forget that uh, uh, the, the big men also have emotions and are driven with them. I, I'm, it's, it's making us think a lot, but uh, the time is uh, running. Um, let's speak a little about this golden ticket. What are you going to do with it? <laughs> I'm very good. Um, you know, what I'm going to do with it is keep it in a, in, in a place where it can remind me of this day. And uh, because I've been, I'm, I'm deeply touched by what happened today. I'm deeply touched by the faces of all those people in the audience, these young people who I, so many of whom are, you know, at the beginning of their journey. Um, and, um, you know, Benjamin and I were talking and Benjamin was saying that, you know, he can remember himself sitting in that audience not so long ago. Um, uh, there's nothing that gives me greater pleasure and satisfaction than seeing and imagining young creators uh, evolving to a place where their paths cross with illumination. Um, so I get, I, this, this actually is a symbol for, um, for, for a level of inspiration and uh, uh, that I experienced today and that I'm gonna keep with me. There's another word hidden in this ticket and actually, you, you, we never used it, neither on stage, neither here, until now. But you used the, um, the terms artistry and creativity. And as long as we are meeting and, and talking, I, I understand that those are the tools of love, actually. And uh, the way you work with the, the 40 uh, directors that you pushed up with the maybe 40 others that, are, that were sitting here with us. All this, um, I, we, can, we can say easily, and Benjamin will confirm, that ANSI, that the, the whole animation community, uh, and all the animators to come, they love you. And this ticket is a way to say thank you for the love you've been given to us through illumination, through all those um, uh, destinies that you are tickling and mm. and making find their path. Mm. So thank we you. love you, Chris. Thank you very and much. And we cannot wait to see what you're going to do with Benjamin. We we saw a few pictures, and it's this is completely amazing. So let's see each other next year. And thanks a lot, both of you and you especially for illuminating our world. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Pleasure to be here with you. We'll be there next year, yeah. I promise. <laughs>